Hey friends, today we are hanging out at the Magic Kingdom and we are going to be doing Disney's Keys to the Kingdom tour. I've always wanted to do this tour ever since I found out they take you down into the utility doors and today's going to be the day. They haven't been doing these tours in over 700 days because of the pandemic and we were lucky enough to get the very first returning tour. Anywho's, let's go do this. It is 7.30 a.m. The tour starts at 8 o'clock and we have to be 15 minutes early. Did that monorail just honk its horn at me? Wow, that was wonderful. What a great start to the day. The Keys to the Kingdom tour is $114 a person. It is a five hour walking tour around the Magic Kingdom Park, showing you the history of it, and then also giving you access to some legendary backstage areas. And like I said, going down into the utility doors underneath Magic Kingdom, it is so amazing. And because we're gonna be in backstage areas, there is a strict no photography, no video, or anything like that. So I'm not gonna be able to actually show you the tour itself, but what I'm going to do is show you what I can and then I'm going to give you a guided tour afterwards showing you what I did and not taking you into the backstage area. So it's going to be really fun and I am so excited. On the confirmation email it says to come and meet up at the Town Square Theater 15 minutes before your tour begins which is uh, 7.45 because mine's at 8 o'clock and it looks like we're just going to hang out and uh, head on in there and get checked in. Now I'm all checked in. They gave me a fancy little name tag that says Disney's Keys to the Kingdom and it has my name on it. And I guess you can keep that because I don't think it'd be good for anyone else named Nathan. And then you actually get a listening device so that you can hear your tour guide better. And it says guest tour, 8 a.m. Uh, you get a bottle of water. And then for lunch, we're eating at Pecos Bills and you get to choose one of these entrees here. So you have to order it beforehand. And this is included in the price, so it's very, very cool. And uh, now we're just gonna wait and the tour should start any minute now. I'm excited. Now that we're all checked in, we're gonna start the tour and then I'm gonna come back out once I'm finished and basically re-walk my footsteps and show you everything that I got to do as long as I'm able to show you. Like I said, I'm not gonna be able to show you the backstage areas, but this is gonna be so exciting. I've always, always wanted to do it and I'm so happy that we're doing it today on the first day back. Once we're all checked in and we've got all of our credentials, including our listening device so that we can listen to our tour guide, which she was fantastic. Her name was Dana and she gave us so much information and the listening device was just so that we can hear her better as we walk through the parks. And it was so cool because it was also picking up the ambient music and I loved it. We came over here and we just looked down Main Street USA and we talked about the history of it being built and also the forced perspective that they actually put in place here. I'm making this video just to give you guys kind of an idea of what the tour is and what you actually get with it. I highly, highly suggest that if this is something that you like, you come out and you book it because it is absolutely amazing. I thought I knew a lot about Disney, but now I know so much more and I got to see so much more of Disney too. I got to see things that I've only ever dreamed of being able to see and that's what I love. And I wish I could show you guys that, but I really can't. And also the things that I learned, I don't want to actually tell you everything because if you do plan on doing it I really think it's awesome that you actually have that feeling of excitement and shock so I'm just gonna touch base on certain things and give you basically a general idea of what you get with the tour where you get to go and everything like that all the history and everything that was actually told and taught to me I'm gonna show I'm gonna tell you a couple of things like I'll repeat a couple of them but I want to leave some to your imagination and for you to actually find out on your own one of the things that the tour guide pointed out to us was the Main Street windows on Main Street USA. And up there you can see Roy O. Disney and to the left you can see if we can dream it, we can do it. And I thought that was a really cool touch. And also she talked about the forced perspective of the buildings going down Main Street USA and how it looks like such a long road to get to the castle. And as you're coming back down Main Street USA, it has the opposite effect and it looks like the train station is much closer than it is and I thought that was really interesting. 
Now we're gonna move along down Main Street USA because that's what we did on the tour. And I'm gonna do my best to actually basically like repeat my steps on the tour itself. Uh, I'm gonna try to remember everything. Some things might be different if you actually take the tour because of certain circumstances or anything like that. So this is just a basic guideline of what I experienced on my tour, but it's gonna be a fun little journey. As we were making our way down Main Street USA, our tour guide was talking about the different windows and the history of Main Street USA. And then she told me about Center Street here. And I've always known about Center Street right here. And it's always a nice spot to come back and relax. But I had no idea that at one time, Center Street went straight across. And they recently just built the Emporium here. Well, not recently, but they uh, built the Emporium right there. This used to be another street. And I had no idea. And then she mentioned that the Roy O. Disney uh, window that was above the confectionery was something that was added after his time because he never wanted to have a Main Street window. He never wanted one, but they actually did give him one and they gave it to him with his like fake name. And I thought that was so cool. And this is actually located over here on Center Street. Right here on Center Street above Uptown Jewelers, you can see one of the windows actually say a real estate development company, and the president is Roy Davis. Roy Davis being uh, Roy Disney, because during the Florida project, when they were coming up and buying land, they didn't want people to know Disney was buying the land, so whenever he went to hotels, uh, he didn't want to check in under the name uh, Roy Disney, so he always uh, referred to himself as Roy Davis. So they actually gave him that window uh, without out, well against his wishes actually because like I said he didn't want to have a window so I thought that was really interesting from here on we actually made our way up to uh, the hub area in front of Cinderella Castle and then she uh, told me some more information that I didn't know and like I said there was a lot of things that just shocked me and I was just like wow I had no clue and also there were things that I didn't know was going to be included on this tour that we'll get to eventually later on that uh, were pretty pretty amazing. Once we got up to the hub area, we were talking about the different lands and how you can actually have like a visual guide of which direction you want to go to. So like Astro Orbiter would be over in Tomorrowland and you would see Astro Orbiter and be like, okay, that's the Tomorrowland. But then if you look over here and you don't see anything for Adventureland, like all you see is the trees there, nothing to really designate the fact that you're going into Adventureland. That's because it's an adventure. Like so uh, we ended up actually going into Adventureland first and it was really awesome but I never really thought about that that's why you really don't see anything over there because it's an adventure as we started to make our way over to Adventureland uh, the park wasn't officially open the uh, park officially opened up at 9 a.m. and it was about 8.30 when we were here and they were still holding people in the hub before letting them actually go to like their favorite attractions for rope drop. So we went over to Adventureland and we just basically walked completely around the big herd of people that were waiting to actually go in that direction and just walked straight in to an empty Adventureland and it was so amazing. As we were walking through Adventureland, the tour guide also pointed out how uh, the parkway isn't kind of a straight shot. It actually goes like this, and that's because it wants to add to the Adventureland feel and how there would be adventure around every single corner. And I never realized it, but that is exactly how the walkway is. It's like this. So interesting and things I kind of never realized. And being able to walk through Adventureland when there was nobody here was also a really cool feeling because the park at this point still is not open. The park officially opened up at 9 a.m. So we made our way down to the Jungle Cruise and we got to ride Jungle Cruise and we didn't even have to wait in line because there was no wait because the park wasn't open. We got there, I think like just about five minutes before the park opened and we just walked right up the exit and right on to our own boat. And it was so, so awesome. Once we got on our own private boat, instead of having a skipper as a tour guide, the tour guide actually took the controls and instead of having a fun, uh, like jokey kind of Jungle Cruise, instead, the Jungle Cruise is actually all educational, the way Walt actually wanted it to be, but it was more about the history of the Jungle Cruise and I thought that was such an awesome thing. And also, we uh, got a lights on experience. And I'm gonna see if we can actually ride right now and I can talk about it because 
because this was a cool thing that you could basically never have happened to you, but during this tour, they just turned on the lights for us and I loved it. I wish that we could actually be back on the tour itself because it's an 80 minute wait. 80 minute wait. While we're waiting to actually get in our boat, I wanted to tell you what I learned about the Jungle Cruise. Uh, Walt Disney originally wanted all animals, like real animals on the Jungle Cruise. And when he realized that wasn't possible, uh, he uh, made it kind of like a history, not like a history, uh, an educational boat ride. And it was scripted about education about animals. And because people really didn't like it that much, the skippers actually started to make little jokes. And uh, it kind of turned into the attraction that it is today, a funny Jungle Cruise. The journey begins in the Amazon rainforest where it rains 365 days a year. And kids, that's every other day. You're going to take the information back to your teachers after this little vacay. They won't believe you, but don't worry, you're right. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Um, It looks like no one showed up to our welcoming party. I can't see anyone, Canoe. Oh. Am I the problem? Is it me? I just really don't get it. I'm Funny enough, right? I don't understand. What could have scared them away? Do you see anything? I just, I really don't get. Do you see anything? I don't see nothing. What? Ah! I'm so sorry, y'all. That's just my ex boyfriend. Oh, I really wish that I had a memory like this. I think it really helped me with my job. Right behind me is one of our boulders. Now, my friends, if we look over here, we can see some really cool jungle wildlife. Okay, we have some spotted dogs, gray dogs. lights on was in here. Jungle Cruise. Natalie was fantastic. One of the best skippers I think I've ever had. She literally made me smile and laugh so many times and I just love that. I really, really do love it. After we got off the Jungle Cruise, we continued our tour. We made our way over to the Tiki Room where we learned some really cool facts about that. And then over to Pirates of the Caribbean where we learned some other amazing facts. And I'm going to tell you a couple of the cool things about Pirates of the Caribbean though. 
something really cool to point out about Pirates of the Caribbean. Here, when you actually make that drop down below, you're actually dropping and going underneath the Walt Disney World Railroad, and it's taking you into the show building behind, and I thought that was so awesome. Disneyland has two different drops, makes it a little bit busy, bigger, and it also has a restaurant in it, so we have a much smaller Pirates of the Caribbean, but it was really cool to like kind of realize that you're dropping down underneath the railroad. Really, really awesome. Once we got done talking about Pirates of the Caribbean for a little bit, we made our way over to Tortega Tavern and we sat down for a bit and we talked about Mortimer the Mouse and Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse and Oswald and then we had a bathroom break and then the tour guide said something that made everybody just start clapping and getting excited. She said, are you guys ready to go backstage for the first time? And everybody got super excited and it was so fun and then we made our way backstage. Now, you guys probably know how obsessed I am with like backstage and just history of Walt Disney World and being able to see places that I normally would not be able to see, this is such an awesome thing. So when she said backstage, my eyes lit up and I just got so excited. And we're gonna go over now. I wish I could show you, but I can't show you because I can't even go back there now. I can only go back on the tour, but I'm gonna best describe it the best way I can and maybe try to use some photos as well. We made our way up to Frontierland and then we uh, proceeded to go backstage right through here. We actually walked right in there and walked right down to the show buildings where they keep all of the uh, cavalcades and all the parade floats. And it was directly in between uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, like Pirates of the Caribbean show building and then Splash Mountain's show building. And they had so many cool things down there. They had uh, hippopotamus from the jungle, uh, jungle Cruise out there. They had all of the ride vehicles and it was it was absolutely magical I pulled up an aerial photo so I'm gonna be able to show you guys exactly where we went backstage and I think that's really cool because I wasn't sure how I can explain it to you but it was so amazing to see back there uh, just being able to see like all of the different parade floats and even the new ones we got to see the uh, Adventureland uh, cavalcade before it actually debuts which is in a couple days so we got a look at something brand new we also got to see uh, the uh, electric water pageant like up close we walked all all the way down to the waterway that uh, is where the electric water pageant is actually like housed and it was so so awesome like I was like kind of all giddy and laughing they had all different types of parade floats down there they had every single one they had uh, the uh, Christmas one they had the Halloween ones and it was it was really awesome like it was really really cool so basically we entered in right here and then we walked all the way back to these two buildings right here and these buildings this building right here was uh the one where all the cavalcades were and then this one over here was where the parade floats were and then you can see the water and you can see the water pageant alongside the water we went all the way down there and uh, this is the show building for pirates of the caribbean and this is the show building for uh splash mountain and we were all the way down here like we were down here and it was so so awesome just to be able to see all this stuff like i was i was so giddy and then seeing the hippopotamus from uh the jungle cruise out there that was really really cool after being backstage it was just so like hard to comprehend what just happened i was like wow this is so cool and like for me it's something i've always like kind of wanted to know more about i always want to see backstage areas i never worked for the company before i do want to actually work for disney eventually in the future maybe when i'm ready to retire but uh i would never have that opportunity unless i did this tour or did another tour so being back there was really really something amazing to me and i loved it and we probably needed a break after that so we actually had to pay those bills and it was it was lunch time so it was time to actually get lunch like I showed you in the beginning with the menu and uh, it was ready to eat when it came to lunch we had a private room for ourselves and it was actually this room itself and uh, I wanted to order the food again to show you guys what I got because I wasn't allowed to film but uh, we had our food set up just like this and then it had a little tiny name tag to let you know that this was your assigned table and it says Disney's Keys to the Kingdom Nathan and then on the inside you've got your special Keys to the Kingdom pin so that was really cool and I kind of really like this like isn't that really fancy but it doesn't have like a Disney pin back that was one thing I was like oh wait 
So it's like a kind of like a pin pin. We sat in here for probably just about a half an hour and we had lunch and I showed you all of the offerings that we could have had in the beginning. I ended up getting the fajitas and it was really good, you know? I ended up uh, making my own little, little tiny soft tacos, you know? And uh, yeah, maybe I'll eat some now. I'm not gonna eat all of this because I already had some uh, just about, well, actually, that was a while ago. It was like five hours ago. <laughs> The whole tour was a long time, and now me redoing the tour, it's gonna be a long day. So this was all included in the price of the tour, so you got your own lunch item, and uh, yeah, I got a little rice, we got a little of that, a little chicken, a little peppers and onions, you get to make yourself a nice little, nice little fajita. I like it, it's really, really good. Now, since this was the first tour back since the shutdown, uh, they weren't used to having tours without the condiment bar, and uh, they kind of brought everything in here, and they had it just available so we can grab. And we didn't have to sit in here. Once you got done eating, it was kind of like free time. You can get up, you can go around and use the restroom, go get coffee if you wanted to. But as you were on the tour, it's kind of like a very strict uh, criteria. So like you have to go exactly where you have to. I'm sure if you have to use a restroom, you can say, hey, we have to stop and use the restroom. But you can't kind of sneak off and go grab a coffee. So if you wanted to do anything, this is the time. And also, a lot of the backstage areas, they don't even want you to take your phone out of your pocket unless it's like a super, super emergency. So here's the time you would actually wanna like check your text and check your emails and everything like that and respond back to people. I hope it doesn't sound too loud in here. It's a little bit echoey, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have some of my fajitas now. Just recently, I brought a park mat to the, the parks from 1998, and they were talking about new Pecos Bills opening, and they had hot dog baskets, and they had hamburgers and stuff like that. The menu has changed a lot over the years, but I kind of really like this. This is really good. Honestly, this is good enough to even say that it might be my favorite quick service here at the Magic Kingdom. I mean, Casey's is pretty good. I really like it, but I feel like this is the best bang for your buck. It costs $15 and you get pretty good portions. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a very fulfilling meal. So I, I kind of think this is my favorite quick service and I really wasn't expecting it. This is the first time I've ever had it. I normally always get like the Big Al double burger, but I wanted to do something different and uh, I ended up liking it. So it's, it's good to try new things. Here, here. Now it's time to keep moving along and we're gonna make our way from Frontierland down into Liberty Square. Looks like here comes a cavalcade on our way though. And it's so funny because just a couple of minutes ago, we were way back there where this was actually being stored and getting ready for the day. And we got to see it up close along with some other really awesome floats. So, so cool. Whew. Hi Tinker, she like, oh, she's got her, she's got her uh, fancy coat on. The fancy coat. Like I said, we're gonna be making our way up to Liberty Square, and we went up here, actually, so we can talk about some of the cool history of Liberty Square itself, and also some of the things you wouldn't normally notice, and also to talk about one of uh, like my favorite all-time attractions, the Haunted Mansion. Once we got up here to Liberty Square, I learned some interesting things, like number one, the Liberty Tree right here in the center was handpicked by Walt Disney himself, and he said he wanted this exact tree to be in Liberty Square, and this tree is over 150 years old, and they were successfully able to relocate it, and I thought that was so, so awesome. Such a cool fact that I had no idea, and also, the lanterns on here represent the 13 colonies, and uh, it's just like the little details, or like the fact that the uh, windows up here and the shutters kind of look like they're all tilted, and that's because back in the Liberty, like, the time era, uh, they used leather, and once the leather gave way, everything started to slant. So it was really cool to learn these different things. Once we started to make our way over to the Haunted Mansion, it started raining a little bit, and uh, we tucked into the riverboat, and we got a clear shot of the Haunted Mansion itself, and uh, we just talked about it a little bit, and it was actually really awesome to see it from that angle, and I never really stopped to appreciate it, but I'm gonna show you now, because it is really beautiful from that way, like that angle. 
we stood right here and we just had a big conversation about the Haunted Mansion. And after going over some really awesome facts, uh, she said, would anybody like to go ride the Haunted Mansion? And of course, everybody got super excited. They laughed, they you know, clapped their hands. And she said, we don't like to wait in the regular lines. She's like, in fact, we don't even want to go in the lightning lane. Instead, we're going to take you in a special way. And we all left and I'm going to try to show you again which way we went. And it was so, so cool. But look how long the line is right now for the Haunted Mansion. Like, holy moly. And instead of going, like I said, in the standby lane or the lightning lane, uh, she took us right up into the servants' quarters and right through it. Now, sometimes you can actually get in here without being on like a tour. I've done it before, but it was nice that this, she brought us in that way. And I'm going to try to do it again today. I'm going to try to show you guys uh, a look at the servants' quarters here at the Haunted Mansion. We'll see. I can't promise anything, but I'm going to try. If not, I can show you the door we went into. So we walked right in, right up the exit side here, and then when we get around the corner here, you'll see a door that's marked Servants' Quarters, and uh, that's a quick like connect right on over to the stretching portrait room and it's really nifty in there because they have a lot of cool haunted mansion artifacts on the wall and uh yeah i like it a lot and it looks like we're gonna be going in servants quarters only wait till i show you guys and now it's gonna be super dark and you can't show much in there but uh it's really really awesome here it is right here look at this isn't it so cool these are the bells for the different rooms inside the Haunted Mansion. And then you got a nice little clock up here. And then look at the uh, lights right here, the light fixtures. And then you actually go in this door and it takes you straight into the stretching portrait rooms. This is really nifty stuff though, isn't it? I love it. Also on the other side of the wall, they have the keys to the different rooms inside the mansion. Look at this. I love it. Just the detail is just so cool. Yeah. And there's a little vanity behind the door itself with a little hidden Mickey down here. I love it so much. It's so cool in here. It's really, really something I really do love. Even this, I think this was a candle holder. That's what that was for, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but I love it. <laughs> Inside that little like vanity there, they have a book of condolence too. And uh, it's all visitors. In, lo in loving memory of you who have joined us from Swinging Wake. That is so cool. I'm gonna sign it. This is really, really awesome. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> you want to bid on the first page you can? It's up to you. All right. <laughs> I can't see a thing. I love it. <laughs> you see, paging Mr. Morrow. That is too cool. Thank you. Yeah. How awesome was that? It is so cool to be in there. And plus, we've got a honorary caretaker uh, certificate. So we are an honorary caretaker <laughs> at the Haunted Mansion. And I love it. Such a cool thing. And that's how we got to do. And then we got to ride the ride. And uh, it was amazing. After we got to ride the Haunted Mansion, we actually started making our way through Fantasyland and the tour guide said, now it's time, it's the moment everyone's waiting for. We're going down into the Utilidors. And I was so excited. I was super pumped. The funny thing is, is uh, I've read so many different things about doing this tour of where you actually go under, like in the Utilidors, and I wasn't expecting where they took us to actually go down under. Go down under, doesn't that sound so funny? But it was uh, like an unlikely spot, and we just went right in and went through a door, and I'll show you the door that we went into that led us down into the Utilidors. To get to the Utilidors, we went into the gift shop next to the Philhar Magic at Fantasy Fair, and uh, there's a door right over here that leads down, and we went down three, I think about three flights of steps, because Fantasyland is the highest, uh, actually, for uh, all of the Utilidors, and yeah, this is it. Musicians only. We went in this door, went down three flights of steps, and then we continued to journey under through the Utilidors. You guys have no idea how much of a dream come true it is to actually go down to the Utilidors for me. Probably way more like 
fascinating to me than the backstage areas. I wish I could show you. There are some videos out there. I know Oprah actually did a video down there so you can check it out. Uh, but we actually went in here in Fantasyland and we walked underneath Cinderella Castle all the way down Main Street USA and it was magical. It was so cool seeing all the history down there and just being a part of something that, like I said, only cast members and a select few can go down and see it so like that alone sold me on this tour and i'm gonna see if i can pull up something to show you guys an old utilidor like map but if not look for like the oprah video or there's a, some other videos also and it was really really magical it was really really cool and i'm so happy i kind of want to do it again so at this point we went downstairs and we were completely underground and we went right down underneath the castle right down main street usa and when we got under to the castle there was an elevator underneath there that took you all the way up to the cinderella royal suite too it was really cool because it i think it had three different stops uh, the elevator from the bottom it took you up to the stage and then also up to the cinderella royal suite and i wish i could have gone in that that would have been pretty epic but I mean, that's, a, that's another tour. There is a tour that you could do where you get to go inside the Cinderella Royal Suite, but I think that's a couple thousand dollars. You're gonna have to look it up. It is super expensive. I had to look up the price, but it was $6,500 a person. So today, $114. $6,500 to go see the Cinderella Royal Suite and I'm sure you get much more with that tour I feel I feel like it's something really awesome. If I had the money. I probably would do it I mean that would be epic. They should let me film though if I'm paying $6,500 I feel like that should come with it, but wow that must be pretty amazing but still, just to be able to say that I walked through Cinderella Castle while well, underneath Cinderella Castle was really, really awesome. We even walked underneath the moat that surrounds Cinderella Castle. So it was kind of really awesome to see like one area of the utilities where you can see that it dropped down a little bit more because that's where the water was actually being held for the water, like the moat. And that was really, really interesting. Now we're gonna walk through it instead of under it. I'm not too sure, but I think either that door or this door right here is the elevator that actually goes up the Cinderella Royal Suite. I'm not 100% on that. I might be wrong, but still pretty interesting. And when you actually look at Main Street USA from this point of view, I still can't believe that we like journeyed this far underneath ground. Well, we weren't technically underground because the utilidors were basically the bottom and the park itself is built on top like the roof. So it's not underground technically, it's more or less just the first level. But we traveled straight down right to Main Street USA and then right over there we ended up coming out by uh, Tony's Town Square. So it's pretty amazing and that was it. That wrapped up the whole entire tour uh, and it was well, lovely. I really think it's so worth it. And with that, I think we are done here today. Let me know in the comments if you guys think uh, this is something you would like to do. I think personally it's so worth it. $114, you get lunch included. It's a whole, whole five hours, five hours. So it, it really does take up the afternoon and you get to learn so much and you get to see things that you would never normally get to see. Uh, my tour guide Dana was phenomenal. She was so, so knowledgeable and her presentation was like, a plus like she was so so good and she made me laugh she actually actually made me like tear up a little bit when uh we were down in the utility doors and we were talking about walt and roy and like i said i didn't want to go into detail and tell you a lot of the things that uh she told us only because i if you guys plan on doing this i want you to experience that for yourself and i just want this video as a visual guide of what to expect if you do come on the tour but there is so much that you're gonna learn they're gonna tell you so many things and and I absolutely love it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.